Hi sisters, Jacob Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is currently six in the morning and you're probably wondering, James, why do you keep filming YouTube videos this early? I'm also wondering the same thing. For today's video, we are going on a road trip. I wish I never did that. Oh my God. Today, we together are going to be going on a little bit of a road trip and I am so beyond excited because we are going somewhere very, very special and for today's video, I am going to be doing a full face of makeup using makeup that I am about to make. So I've been a beauty guru for about three very, very long years at this point and thanks to you guys, I've actually been able to turn playing with makeup into a full-time job and I still pinch myself every single day. At this point, you guys have seen me pretty much do every single makeup look in the book, from classic everyday glam to crazy rainbow avant-garde realness, but even though my job is to play with these makeup products and create art with them on my face, I really don't know that much about what actually goes in to making makeup. So for today's video, I thought it'd be really, really fun and educational to go behind the scenes, and I partnered with ColourPop Cosmetics, a brand that you and I obviously know and love, and we're going to be taking a hour-long road trip over to Oxnard, California, literally in the middle of nowhere, but that is where their laboratory is located. Luckily, after a whole lot of convincing, ColourPop was kind enough to let me and my entire camera crew go behind the scenes and show you guys what actually goes on in these labs, and we're going to be making a full face of makeup, starting with foundation and ending with lip gloss, and hopefully we'll be able to come up with a really, really beautiful look in the end, and give you guys a little bit more information on the products that we're all using every single day. We have a very long car ride and day ahead of us, so I'm gonna quickly go hop in the shower and get ready for the day. This bed head is not cute, but I am so beyond excited for what's to come. So without further ado, let's go make some makeup. Three seconds in and I already just stepped in mud on the Balenciagas. It's off to a rough start, ladies. Good morning, how are you? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm so excited for today. We're all so excited. Should we head right in? Let's do yeah. it. Let's do it. Basically, we own like nine buildings, like all That's around everything. Here. Oh my god. <laughs> This is gorgeous. This is what Sister gorgeous. Sister LLC needs. Seriously. Obviously, like, I do makeup every single day as a job, yes. but like I've never really been a part of like the actual production process for. And like school came pretty easy to me, but science and math are my two like favorite subjects of all time. Really? And I actually really liked chemistry. So I'm like excited today, low key a little bit yeah. to like <laughs> learn more about it and like see what actually goes into the products that I use on an everyday basis. Yeah, for sure. So you'll have like all the different stations. They are like so prepped, they're ready. We like picked the best spot for like lighting. Oh, oh hopefully. yeah. All the <laughs> things that we're gonna need. <laughs> Love that. How long has ColourPop like been around and manufacturing here? So it started maybe like five, six years ago as like a little idea. So Spatz Laboratories used to like manufacture for like all the big makeup brands that you know of. And the owners now, John and Laura, John's over there, decided like, why don't we just launch our own brands? Like we, we know how to make makeup. So they like came up with the idea of ColourPop. They literally like used to have their office in like a closet. So like it was like this tiny That's little room and they would like, they'd go make the makeup and they'd like pack the order and then they'd like drive it to the post office. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it's awesome. literally grown from like a tiny little like closet to yeah. this full on um, like nine building facility. Yeah. That's everything. Yeah. So ColourPop manufactures everything right here in California, in yes. the US, which is like one of the major selling points I feel like for ColourPop makeup. Having everything in house means things are faster. That's right. our number one thing. So if a trend comes out later that day, like the lab will have samples for us. Oh, that's so <laughs> that good. is yeah. like what James dreams of, I think. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> well, my biggest thing in working with any brand is I'm I'm very, very impatient. So I'm always like, well, let's do this. And they're like, well, this will take us six months. Like, I want it now. That's so cool because it's so fast. It's literally right there. Yeah, like literally we've done collabs overnight. That's so cool. Yeah, we don't recommend doing that. But <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like one of the other major selling points of ColourPop is the prices are very, very low on most yeah. of the products. Yeah, and that's because everything's in-house. Right. Mm -hmm. So like we literally like, down to like the little plastic molds. That's right. right here too? Yeah. That's so cool. Well, I'm really, really excited. Let's get a quick sister snack and then head over to the lab. Yay! Welcome to our lab. Hi! Yes. Welcome to SA2. Thank you. James, lovely to meet you. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> I love that for you. <gasps> we have a sister's lab coat. Yeah, <laughs> love this. Okay, so we're gonna have Isela. Hi, Isela. 
Yeah. And James, she's lovely to meet you. She's going to be with you Perfect. today. And she's going to guide you through all the process. The Amazing. Oh my God. Sister Dave Clover, <laughs> that's everything. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm a loser. <laughs> so I think we should go in the same order that I would do my normal routine then just to keep everything organized so I can like figure it out and stuff. Okay. So I usually start with my foundation. So foundation is pretty much mixed into, it looks like four different pigments then. We mm -hmm. have white, black, mm -hmm. and then red, red and yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's that easy. That's really easy. And ColourPop has one of the biggest shade ranges of foundation ever. Mm -hmm. Well, because we want to cover every single skin tone out there. Right. 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 We want to have like every single shade for every single person that is out there. Right. I feel like ColourPop does a really good job of that. And I feel like yeah. because it's all done in-house too, people always love to say like, oh, it's really hard to formulate certain shades, but when it's all done right here, yeah. you're watching the entire yeah. process go down. So mm -hmm. you get to actually make it happen. Right. Okay, let's figure out how to mix my shade together. Okay. Go on. Let me get a spatula. Number one primary color is the white. So okay. you're gonna start adding the white okay. on your broker. So about how much do you think I should add? Just add like four grams. Four? How much is four grams? Okay, so you're gonna put four point ah. zero zero zero. Oh, that's point four. So to formulate 42 different shades. Formulate the base and then from there we just create uh, all the colors. Right, so like how, like what goes into actually like differentiating every single shade. It's just literally just mixing together different pigments and hoping for the best. Mm -hmm. Is this good? Yeah, a little bit too good. much? Okay. It's okay, I usually can't match my foundation anyway, so nothing will be different. <laughs> okay, so one more gram. Yes, yeah. just gonna be careful because some of the pigments are heavier than others. See how this one's a little bit, the viscosity is thicker, thicker. than the white one? Oh yeah. yeah. It's crazy because the littlest little drop will actually mm -hmm. like add to it. Yeah. Okay, you're good. Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> then we're just gonna start with red and this one you're just gonna add Point zero two. <laughs> You're killing me. Point zero two? Yeah. There's more drop. There you go. That's good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Point zero one. Oh my and god. And you gotta be careful with the black, with black pigment. Yeah. It's just like eyeshadow. Down. Once you add too much black, there's yeah. no going back. Mm -hmm. Like that? Yeah. You can just tap it on the side of the... There you go. Oh my gosh. That one drop would change the entire yeah. color too, huh? Mm -hmm. Science is crazy. So what you're gonna do, you're just gonna hold the beaker. Okay. And we're gonna start mixing. Oh my god, it's like skin tone. Oh my gosh, that's me. Maybe, according to my foundation at home. Can I match skin tone? No. Will I make it work? Yes. It's only for pigments. That's and so it takes cool. only like five minutes for you to make your shade. That's for all the right. brands who say, oh, we didn't formulate any dark shades. That's too hard. You heard it right here, folks. Take five minutes. Make it happen. It's not that hard to be inclusive. This is so, so cool. you want to go ahead and fill it yes, in. Yes, we're going to squirt it in there. And that's my like foundation. Oh my God. Foundation. <laughs> wow, ready to go. Oh my god, that was literally so easy. Do let's... you want to move into concealer? Yeah, let's do it. So our concealer's already pre-mixed. I'm just going to be filling it in my little vial today. <laughs> kind of fun. I guess foundation was really, really easy, but what is like the difference in formulation when it comes to concealer? Because the formula is a little bit different, huh? The it's more is completely different. Yeah. Completely different. We add more pigments. The load of the pigments is higher because we have more coverage. And we also add a little bit more of the emollients. It feels a little bit more soft. Love that. What is this called? That's a wiper. Wiper? Mm hmm It just push it in. Holy, shove it on there. There you go. Okay, you love that. Click. Now you're gonna put your applicator. A good doe foot moment. Done. That's so easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello! I need to make makeup. It's kind of fun. So the first two sets of our routine are literally all complete. Full coverage moment. This is probably be a better match than the foundation will be, let's be real. Pale and sad, but good. So now we're moving into bronzer. Okay, so I'm gonna be showing you pressed powder. A okay. little bit easier. So what we do, we have our base formula, which consists of pretty much like cushion powders. Mm -hmm. And then we have our binders and we have our pigments. And then we have our liquids that we put in it. That keep it all together. So different from foundation, a lot of like the bronzers, blushes, and highlighters are a powder base, correct? As opposed yeah. to like a liquid? Yes. Right, so then that's when the pressing comes in because once all the powders are mixed together, then you press, press them good it. into a pan. Yes. Okay, cool. So that's cool. what we're gonna be doing today. Yes. 
You're really good. You should work here. Okay, so we're gonna do afternoon delight. Okay. It looks like this. That's a great color for me. I feel. <laughs> I already have it weighted out. Okay. So then, the, similar to the foundation, there's like a different weight that goes into each thing. Yeah. So pretty much what you wanna do with your spatula, you're gonna spread it out evenly, like this. Okay. And you kind of wanna go like this, so you can get all, all the all the like the chunks out. Yeah. Try um, to keep the pan like all the way up. Oh. Then, look. <laughs> you're fine. Did not realize they were not attached. <laughs> so like, would that be? Yeah. Good for pressing? Yes, that's good. Okay, fun. Okay, so now you just place it in here. We just literally slide it right into yeah. here. Yep. Slide it. We lost a little bit of powder. We can actually fix that a little bit with the PSI. So okay. what this does, this compresses the powder. Okay. So since we lost a little bit, we can actually press it lower so it looks a little bit fuller. Oh, that's good. Gone yeah. but never forgotten. So do you want to do this part? Yeah. Okay. So just crank this down. Mm -hmm. Crank it. Love your crank. Is it gonna start going up? Yeah. Oh. See? <laughs> ah! So like right so there? Right. Yeah, so now release. Like this? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god! Ah! <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's so good! <laughs> wow, love that ColourPop formulas are fall proof. You need that when you're working with me. Oh my god! That's literally it! Yep, that's it. This is so cool. This is a bronzer. Yes. Yeah, it looks, it looks normal. Fine. It looks like I didn't drop half of it onto the floor. <laughs> John, don't zoom in on that. You suck. <laughs> and then is blush pretty much the same thing too? Yes, blush is pretty much the same thing. Let's do it. So now we're going to be doing the blush. Just once again, mixing all the pigments together. Yes. So like, okay, so for example, for me, I usually like more like peachy, orangey types of blush for my mm -hmm. skin tone. So that would just be adding more yellow pigment, Yeah, correct? yellow. It actually contains a lot less pigment. And then an eyeshadow. Then an eyeshadow. Well, right, because you don't want to put on the blush and have it literally yeah. take over your entire face. Okay. And so if it's less pigment, then what would be the other ingredients that are in there? The powders that are in your base, it contains a lot more of that than your pigments. When we have a lot of liquids in it, Sometimes we have to decrease because then we have problems it, with texture. It'll be much and, as opposed to powder. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna keep Remember? it in there this time. And this one's a little bit fluffy. Okay. Than your this one is fluffier. Yeah, it's a lot fluffier. If I'm guessing correctly, this one will have to be pressed a little bit harder. Yes, exactly. So your piece, I would be around a thousand, a thousand five hundred. And these, you only press once. Oh my god, almost just dropped it. Not putting back in again. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna slide this right under yes. here. Can I lock crank this? It. And now you crank it. Crank it for a real one. Oh. <laughs> I'm breaking things. I'm scared. Okay. Okay, so go. this one has to go 1500, like there. Yeah, good. Yeah, you're good. Okay, now so release. now we'll release. There you go. Not gonna drop it this time. <laughs> oh my god! That shade is everything. <laughs> oh my god, this is so cool. See now, for example, the bronzer and the blush, mm -hmm. see like how it was fluffier? Yeah. Like we could have kept pressing it more. Press it harder. So, yeah, because right now you see how it looks a little bit It's overfilled. a little bit over the pan. So, okay, so for the next time I would have pressed it a lot harder with a higher PSI yeah. to make sure it's more in the pan. Yes. So should we press it again? You can press it twice. So we're not gonna press it again. Okay, lesson learned. So for next time I would press this a little bit harder to make sure it's in the pan more. Okay, so that's cool. So different formulas definitely require a different amount of like attention each time. Yeah. Okay, good yeah, to yeah. know. Some are more sensitive than others. Like the highlighter, for example. Like I said, that one you have to press twice. So speaking of highlighter, now that we're done with face products, let's get our glow on. So now we're moving into the highlighter. highlighter. So we already have some pieces pressed. Okay. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna put it into this block. Okay. You're gonna put it under this pressure. You're just gonna put this handle. You're gonna press and see how it's already really nice and smooth. Right. So you're just gonna remove it, put it into one of these seals that we already have glue. Okay. And you're just gonna pass it through this magnet. And we're just gonna make sure that it's... Oh, so fast. That is really fast. And this is how we make every single one of our highlighters out there in production. What? Mm-hmm. So what goes into like the making of a highlighter formula as opposed to a normal shadow? It's all on the palette. So on this one, what it's giving you the glow is this 
silver pearls. It depends on the size of the pearls that you want to use. Okay. If you want like a really high glitter effect, right? We're gonna be looking for a larger pearl, a, a bigger mm -hmm. pearl, a bigger okay. pearl, and it depends on the on the color of the highlighter as well. Okay, cool. One of the common issues that I see a lot in highlighters is that when you put on a highlighter and if it doesn't really match your skin tone, sometimes the base you'll see like that gray cast there. Or if it's like a lighter one, it'll be darker. So that's when the base is not right for the skin tone. Correct? It's not in the base. It's all in the colors. It's all on oh. the pearls. It's all whatever the pigments that you're using that is making you look gray. Okay. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we have to work on this. Right. Yeah. When we take it for evaluation with PD, they're like, oh, it looks kind of gray on my skin. Right. So we have to get rid of the effect. So it's all about tweaking effect. the colors whenever you paint a new firm to make go. sure that it works on all skin tones. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give that gray cast. Yeah. Okay, let's press so it. So you're then. ready? Yeah. Okay. Into the block. Okay. Literally already, this is so pretty. Hello. Mm -hmm. oh. You're just gonna put it under the pressure. Okay. And then and you're just gonna just press it all the way down. Mm -hmm. There you go. Like that? Mm -hmm. So you already have like, already the has print. The lines, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna remove it from the piece. So now push it up. Push it up. And you're gonna put it into those cells. So it already has glue on it mm -hmm. too. Okay. You just throw it in there. You don't have to press because the magnet will do it for you. Oh my god, that's so cool. Yeah. So I just rub it over. <gasps> oh, that was yeah. way stronger than I expected. <laughs> just slide it to the side. There you go. And now it's on there. And yep. And then you That's get one so of your cool. Videos. Now this goes mm -hmm. under here. You just just put right it under. under. There. Just pull the handle. And that's it. It's in there. Oh my gosh. You just put the cap on it and you have your highlighter. What the heck? That's so uh -huh. cool. Oh my gosh. Can I swatch it? Of course you can. Look okay, at sister swatch. Let's see. Oh my god. Hello? That's the prettiest ever! That's one of our number ones. Yeah, so, I could see yeah. why. Let's add it to the collection. Bing! Perfect! Oh my gosh, okay! Okay, let's <laughs> move on to the next step. So for all the products we made so far today, of course we're doing the classic ColourPop formulas that we all know and love and that I've loved so many times, but we did want to do at least one thing custom. Come on, you guys, how to happen. So I'm gonna be making a custom gloss today. Hopefully, we're gonna <laughs> pray that it looks good. But I wanted to make like a kind of like pinky, peachy, light nude shade. Like a go-to everyday nude. It's pretty much almost the same thing because you have here White, your, yellow, your red pigments. And mm -hmm. So I want like a peachy pink, but like leaning slightly more towards pink than peachy. Okay. So therefore there should be more red. You're gonna add more red than yellow. yellow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just put like 1%. That? Yeah. Actually, glosses, they have like very little pigment. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. They're like really sheer. I want less yellow. Right. Mm, maybe not that much. Like that? I guess we're gonna find out. I'm a scientist, guys. Is there reasoning behind putting the black in there? What does it do? It's not gonna be too bright. Okay. So it like kind of mutes it down a little mm -hmm. bit. Like that much? I think a little bit less. <laughs> There you go. That's like nothing. Mm -hmm. So like literally one but like extra little crumb of blocking your entire color is wrong. It makes a huge impact. Oh, I would be messing up lipsticks left and right here. <laughs> so we have my powders all mixed together, but now we need to add the liquid base that makes it a gloss. Just good enough to wet the pigments. I will say probably like 5%. Can I just grind it together? Yeah, you just start mixing. Okay. Kind of fun, kind of down. <laughs> Oh my god! Hello, that's like an actual color! Okay, so what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna go ahead and grind the pigments. So you're just gonna be like adding your pigments in here. Don't put your hand in there or anything. Yeah, don't want to lose any, yeah, fingers. any fingers. So okay. I'm just gonna pour it right over top of here. Oh my god, this yeah. is what I always see in those Instagram videos where the pigments yeah. are in the house. Oh yeah. my god, I'm yeah. so excited. Wait, okay. what is this for? Just for you to get air all the oh, product. Oh, got it. Oh my so god! Now we're grinding all the pigments and then we pass it three times. Ready? Yes. This is literally those Instagram paint mixing videos. I watch those for hours. Okay, so now we're gonna take it to the mixer. Okay. So we can put it together with the rest of the liquid paste. Now you're gonna mix it. So once you pass it through three times, it gets like this. Guys, it's my lip gloss. So now this goes right under here. Yep. I love these syringes, it's kind of fun, not gonna lie. So this is just the classic ColourPop lip tube. Oh my God, there it is. That's my lip color, oh my God. That's literally my gloss, hello. That's so cool, I just made this. You all just watched that happen. Can I put it on? Yeah. 
That's everything. I look the best. Wow, I'm probably really good at this. Probably should do this as a job, maybe, perhaps. Okay, great. Now we're moving into the brow, right? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so we literally just finished baking almost my entire makeup routine in one hour. We just did everything all right here in-house, custom made. This is so incredibly cool, but we do have one product left remaining, and that is going to be, of course, the eyebrows. The eyebrow pencils are actually manufactured in a different building on the same facility, so we're gonna head right over there right now so we can get my brows on fleek. What is that? Hair <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Gotta okay. do it. Down, down. Gotta keep everything look... sister sanitary. Yes, you're gonna look fabulous. Sisters fully. Wipe it, and then we clean the tip. She works. Okay. Right it's done. Done. I am the queen of the assembly line. Ah! Okay. Now we're done. Okay. So obviously, like, this is my first time doing that, but you're like an expert of the brow. How many do you produce in like an hour? The girls can do anywhere from 200 to 230. An, an hour? hour? Yes. 1500 to 2000 a day. A day? Yes. And all done by hand? Yes. That is so cool. Well, I'll be taking one for my videos today. Gotta do my brows with this, but that is so cool. Thank you for showing me how to do that, sister. You're Thank you so much. You're so sweet. Wow, gonna run the assembly line now. All right, sisters, that is our lab day all complete. We literally just made every single product of our makeup routine in only a few hours. That was so crazy and so cool to see everything here in person. Obviously, I play with makeup every single day, but getting to actually see how hands-on it is and seeing everybody involved from the start to the end is such a cool, amazing process. Definitely has my wheels turning. I'm feeling very, very inspired right now, but that is, of course, for the future. For right now, I'm gonna take off my lab coat. Oh, and my hair net as well. And we're gonna head home and actually do my makeup now using all the makeup that I made. All right, sisters, we are back from the lab and I have here my little bag of DIY makeup products that I made today. I am so beyond excited to actually put them on. I had so much fun learning and seeing the behind the scenes process. Literally everything was so cool. So let's put on the makeup and talk about everything. So to start my makeup today, I of course like to go into my foundation first, always. So I'm gonna grab the ColourPop No Filter Foundation in the shade Me. Okay, I'm gonna pray that this color is like a somewhat decent match. Little too much yellow. I literally had an entire team of professionals who do this every single day to help me with this, and I still managed to make my shade wrong. Am I disappointed? Yes. Surprised? 
Absolutely not. Probably my favorite part of the entire day today was actually the foundation process, just because I do find chemistry to be very, very interesting. And seeing what actually goes into like foundation is really, really cool. Over the past three years, I've tried probably hundreds of foundations at this point, but I've only really found a few that actually really, really work for me and my skin, which is so crazy because pretty much every major brand at this point has a foundation line out or is working on one. And it seems like, oh, it's just foundation, but you guys saw me measuring out the ingredients today and literally one wrong drop of either pigmentation or color or liquid or ingredient and the entire batch would be completely wrong and could actually ruin the entire formulation. So it's actually so cool to see what goes into the first step of the makeup process in order to even out all of our skin tones. Although there are so many ingredients and processes that go into making complexion products, probably my favorite part of the entire day today was seeing how easy it was to actually mix together different pigments to make different shades. One of the biggest problems in the makeup community, whether you want to admit it or not, is racism. And unfortunately, that is not a topic that I am a stranger to. But although it was a nightmare at the time, my old tweets being brought back up and me being held accountable for them actually was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. It's truly changed the person that I am today for the better. And it's made me realize that I have a platform of a lot of people watching me. And of course, I want to use that platform for good. And I want to educate on behalf of issues that are really, really important. And shade range is definitely one of those topics. I feel like there have been quite a lot of foundation line launches within the past few years with shade ranges that can only be described as like just really, really embarrassing. And one of the excuses that big brands always seem to give when it comes to that issue is, oh my God, it's so much harder to formulate the darker shades because we don't want to get the undertones wrong. And as a consumer, as someone who has never really been involved with the making of that process, I am definitely ashamed to say that I've kind of fallen for that. But, but after seeing it behind the scenes, there's literally no excuse. There's four pigments. Add some more black, add some more red, add some more yellow. Make it work. You saw it here today, folks. It's apparently not that hard to be inclusive. And I'm gonna let you in on a little bit of a sister secret. And of course, I don't wanna speak for anybody here, but people of color would probably be really excited to see their shade range represented. And it's a win-win situation for a business when you're actually selling products. Just thought I'd put that out there. All right, sorry, I rant over, base is all on, I just set it in place, and now let's move on to chiseling this out, getting nice and snatched. I'm just gonna grab my M405 brush and dip into the custom bronzer shade that I made. So for the bronzer and blush, I actually found the whole like pressing process to be really, really cool. Clearly, I struggled a little bit with getting everything together and not spilling it on the floor, but you know what? It's my first time, accidents do happen. I was actually so surprised because I did not realize that these processes were all done by hand. I really, really thought we were gonna be walking into the lab and there was gonna be like 80 million conveyor belts and machines all pressing and packing and mixing things together, but almost every single one of the products that I was part of the process with today are actually all handmade in the factory every single day by hardworking employees. I think that is so cool. So next time moving on to my brows, I made the shade Brunette today and I'm just going to fill in my brows like normal. Mm, that is a good brow. I also really, really love the process of making the eyebrow pencils too, and let me tell you why. Obviously, it was a whole lot different than all the chemistry and ingredients and formulations that were going on in the other lab, but when I was a young kid, I used to be obsessed with mechanics and figuring out how things worked. My dad was a self-employed contractor when I was growing up, and one of the reasons he was super popular in my town for jobs was that because he was actually able to do so many of the jobs involved, everything from the design work to the actual construction and building to the plumbing to the electricity, like he truly was a jack of all trades, which has definitely inspired my work ethic today. I always loved going to jobs with him because of the fact that I got to sit there and figure out how things were made and how things worked. I loved mechanics and pulleys and levers. I was obsessed with cords. I don't know how I never got electrocuted. I had a very, very strange obsession with vacuum cleaners. Don't ask because I literally have no idea, but I always found that realm very, very interesting. So seeing the machines and the mechanisms that actually put the brow pencils together was so cool for me, not even gonna lie. Even though there was a machine involved, once again though, almost all completely done by hand, no robots, real human beings working at these stations, producing up to, I think, 2,000 brow pencils I said a day, which I think is so incredibly cool. So moving on to the next step, which of course is going to be my eyeshadow. I'm just gonna throw in a look quickly using the ColourPop and Give It To Me Straight Eyeshadow Palette. I did not formulate one of these in the lab today just because I'm already familiar with the process. So I just throw on this full cut crease moment. I haven't done one in a hot minute now. Really liking how this is turning out. But obviously I have a whole entire island that I wanna fill up. So I'm gonna grab the Super Shock Shadow that I created today at the lab and plop it on there. I'm just gonna pack this shade right on the lid. Oh, wow, that's pretty. And I'm quickly just gonna pop on a winged liner just to finish off the eye look. Oh my God, that eyeliner is eight inches thick. <sighs> I'm so scared of that wing. 
Oh my god, it keeps getting thicker. This is the worst eyeliner wing I've ever done in my entire makeup history. Oh my god, how did this happen? Oh my god, if I take it off, it's just gonna get messier. So usually when a look isn't going exactly as planned, I'll just like pop on a lash and it'll fix all my problems. That's not happening today. But it's not the makeup's fault, it's mine. I don't know how I got to 9 million subscribers, but alas, my eye makeup is done and I'm ready to move on to the rest of the face. So the next step of my routine is of course going to be my highlighter. I need to get my glow on because I'm looking a little bit flat right now. I'm gonna use my Super Shock highlighter that I created with ColourPop today and I am so beyond excited. I was actually really excited to learn more about highlighter and what goes into making it just because I feel like it's that last step that we all know and love and appreciate. I mean like who doesn't love a good glow? But I was actually so curious to see like what goes into the formulation of a highlighter just because I feel like there's so many ways that I feel like a highlighter has to perform all at the same time. Like I was saying at the lab, if the base color isn't right, then it can either look gray or orange depending on the person's skin tone. But while doing that, when you turn, it has to reflect on the light and look shiny. There are different pearl sizes. You can either have like a tiny little pearl for a subtle everyday woman on the go type of glow, or you can have an intense blinding and glittery glow, which you all know that I definitely love. <laughs> I just feel like it's similar to foundation. One thing going wrong can literally change the entire formula and can either make it look so beautiful or so bad, which feels like it's like a high risk situation. I mean, it's literally just creating a highlighter, but kind of sounds fun and fresh. So the last step of my makeup routine today is of course going to be the Lippity Doodas and I'm gonna use my custom gloss in a second, but first I need to start off by lining them. So I'm just gonna use my favorite lip liner of all time, which happens to be from ColourPop, but this one is not mine. This is actually the shade Kirby in collaboration with Karen. I love Sada E. Not mine, but wish it was, cause this is literally the best lip liner color ever. And Karen is one of my all time favorite people in the makeup community. And last but finally not least, right over top of that lip liner, I'm gonna pop on my custom ultra glossy lip that I created today. I wanted just a perfect peachy nude, leaning more towards pink than orange, and this is what I came up with. Okay, didn't really mean to make the lip and the eyeshadow be like a perfect match today, but I'm gonna pretend like I did because it kind of looks really good and fresh. Let's finish it off with some sister setting spray. All right, sisters, and that is my full face of makeup that I made all complete. I had so much fun getting my hands dirty and working behind the scenes today with ColourPop to really see what goes into actually making a makeup product from start to finish. I mean, we get to play with these products every single day and we all use them to feel beautiful and confident, but there's actually so much of a process that goes into it. So many amazing workers, chemists, scientists, assembly line people, and major shout out to them and to ColourPop for allowing me to be educated, and I hope you guys learned a little bit as well. I am so thankful that I got to experience the whole behind the scenes process and I will definitely never forget it and who knows maybe I'll be part of it one day that is all I have for you today guys I really really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new if you enjoyed it please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below and show your sister support it means the entire world to me and also leave me a comment and let me know if you were to make a makeup product what would it be and why also if you have not already don't forget to click that big red subscribe button down below and come join the sisterhood we are 9 million sisters strong oh my god I cannot believe we are that close to 10 million it's going to be truly iconic and also click that bell icon so you you can get notification every time I upload a brand new video. If you'd like to follow me on my makeup journey, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. They're both at James Charles. My Snapchat for more behind the scenes type stuff is James Charles with an extra S after Charles. This video is sister shout out goes to sister Kiki. Do you love me? Yes. That was the cheesiest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Oh, you know, I love you so, so, so much. And if you'd like to do the next videos, sister shout out, don't forget to always retweet my video links and they go live on Twitter. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed my time here as a sister scientist and I will see you in the next one. Bye.